Hi guys, in this video we're going to discuss the solution to this algebra problem involving exponents. A lot of you had requested for a video in which you wanted to see us solve a question that involved exponents on the new online whiteboard. And here we are. Please keep the suggestions coming in and you'll get all the help you want. Starting with this question, you click on the show whiteboard icon here and it'll launch the whiteboard on your screen. Now it's a data sufficiency question. I don't need to see the options. I remember them and you should remember them too. First, any way we solve the whole question and then if needed, you can read the options later. Right now, using the main tool that I told you about, the text tool, you click here and you have your writing space ready. Before moving on to this question, specifically, I would just tell you how you would type exponents. Now, there are two ways to that. One will use only your keyboard. So, suppose I want to write a squared. So, you type a and then you press shift and six to get this cap symbol. Now, if you write two, this is how you represent a squared. So, a is wearing the cap of two. That, that's how exponents really look. The other way is this. Let me just show you that in another text box. So you have A, you type your A. Now you can use your mouse and the pencil tool to really write a two, which is slow. As you saw me doing it, it it's pretty slow. So this staying throughout with the keyboard is what I would prefer. But you can try both ways. You can practice a couple of questions and see which one you like more. Now for this particular question, I would stay with this, the first version where I completely just use my keyboard. So I'll just clear up the space and let's get into the question. So the question says, what is the value of x, x question mark, if x is an integer greater than two, sorry, greater than zero, so x is positive. So x is greater than 0 and it's an integer, just integer. Okay, so it could be 1, 2, 3, anything. This is all that the question stem gave me. It only told me what possible values my x could have. Time for us to move to the first statement now. Let's have a new text box. Here's statement 1. It says x cubed is equal to x. Now, how do we type this? x, the cap. 3 is equal to x. Now, get them both on the same side. So you'll have x cubed minus x equal to 0. Then you just take x common. What would you have? x squared minus 1 equal to 0. It's pretty fast, you see. Now, you can further factorize the x squared minus 1 part using the identity a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b times a plus b. So you shall have x minus 1 and x plus 1 equal to 0. All your factors there, you have three values of x possible. 0, 1 and minus 1. But what do you already know? You already know it's an integer greater than 0. And so out of these three possibilities, it's only one that's possible. So statement 1 for me is sufficient. Now. Done with statement 1, I go to statement 2. You see, this particular question is not a difficult question. It's a 600 level. But the main intent of this video is to show you how to type exponents in the first place. Before we raise the level of difficulty, let's get comfortable with the basics. Second statement now looks a little more complicated to type, but it's still the same stuff. So x to the power n, x to the power n is equal to, sorry, x to the power n times. Yeah, now how do you show multiplication? See, if you just use your x to show multiplication, that will confuse you with the x that's the variable. So for multiplication, either you just create two brackets. When there's nothing between brackets, it just shows its multiplication. You could do this, 6 upon, now x to the power n plus 2. Now again, this might create confusions if I just leave it as it is. If I just straight away write n plus 2, you might feel that it's x to the power n and then a plus 2. So to avoid that, you'll have to create another bracket like this. 
Now this does not look neat at all. Let's just try to write it the other way where I would not include so many brackets and the multiplication I would try to express using an asterisk. So that's a shift and eight and keep them a little apart so you can see which term is which. Then you just put six upon x to the power n plus two. Now this time you will have to put the bracket. You know that it's only for the power that's on x. It looks much neater than the first version. I hope you feel the same. Now this, they're telling us, is an integer. Now, what does it mean for this to be an integer? What this means is that 6 stays as it is. Let me just first simplify this a little. So if you know the laws of exponent, if I have, say, a to the power 3 divided by a to the power 5, then the result is 1 upon a squared, right? You subtract the powers. So what you will have as a result would be 6 upon x to the power 2 because when you subtract n plus 2 and n you just get 2. You see I'm leaving spaces I'm not writing them one line after the other I have infinite space on this whiteboard I want this to be neat so that I don't have to type a particular thing again. So this thing now is an integer don't keep writing integer every time int works just fine. So 6 divided by x squared is an integer that means 6 is divisible by x squared. Now which integer is this that if you divide 6 by the square of it it still stays an integer. Do you first understand if I say that x squared is a number that's a factor of 6? Is a factor of 6? No, is factor of 6. Let's just forget the grammar for a while. So x squared is factor of 6. What all factors of 6 do you know? So, and remember, x is an integer that's greater than 0. So x is positive. So I would obviously anyway x squared had to be positive, but still this will help us later. So factors are 1, 2, 3 and 6. Now for an integer x, if x squared is one of these, these things, remember, are the values of x squared. Which of these is the square of an integer? Only one, right? It's the square of one. So even now, you can get the value of x and this statement is sufficient as well. Now, when both statements individually are sufficient, what do you mark? You mark option D. So making this small, going for option D, submitting my answer and we're right you see correct answer is D so starting with a relatively simple question I hope this video makes you at least a little bit more confident about working with exponents as well it's nothing very different yes it'll take practice but we're there for you you're there for yourself we'll do it together any doubts about this please feel free to comment happy learning